In this segment, I'm going to show you variable data printing. It's a feature in VerseWorks where you can take a single image and add variable data to it. And in this case, we're going to do multiple names. And I'm going to show you how that's done. First place we're going to start is in Corel. I already have a design set up here. They use stall Texas name tags. Notice I already got my cut line uh, available on it. But there's one other thing we need. We need a variable data area. To do this, we got to actually make our own custom spot color. So we're going to go up to Window, go to our color palettes, and pull up our palette editor. In here, I'm going to make a new palette. I already have one here, but we'll start a new one. And we'll just call it VDP. Now let's save. Once on this screen, we need to add a color. For this one, I'm going to go with some sort of blue. Uh, it doesn't matter what the color is because we're going to make it a spot color. So VerseWorks is just going to look at the code, not the actual color on the screen. So I'm going to add this blue to palette. Hit OK. There's our blue color there. Notice though on the screen it's treated as process. This is making it an actual CMYK color. We need to actually change this to spot. After that we need to name it. Now this is really important. We need to make sure that the first three letters are capital V, capital D, capital P for variable data printing. After that, we need an underscore and then whatever you like. For this case, we're going to be doing names. So I'm going to go ahead and type in names. It's very important that we remember the exact spelling that we used here. Notice the capitals at the beginning after the underscore and a capital N for names. After this, we'll hit OK. Now we got to add that palette over to our color palettes. To do that, we'll go back to Window, into Color Palettes, and we'll open up our Color Palette Manager. If I scroll to the top, there's a folder called My Palettes. This is where anything we created was. And we have that VDP uh, that we just created a little bit earlier. So I'll click on that eye, and it's going to open up that spot color for me. Now it's really important that we make sure this is a square that we make. It's going to be a text data area. So I'm going to zoom in on our design. I'm going to use my rectangle tool here. Apply where I let, want the names to be. And then make sure that the outline of this box is our VDP names blue color. So now that we're done on the screen here, this is actually, this box is where our data is going to be, or the names that we add. So now that this image is done, I'm going to go ahead and file, export, and I'm going to save it as an EPS file on my desktop. Next thing we need to do is get a list of names together. So to do this, we're going to use Microsoft Excel. I already have a new spreadsheet started. Now it's really important here that this first spot, we call it VDP underscore names. Notice exact same spelling as we spelled that spot color earlier. Underneath this, we'll go ahead and list some names. Once we have our list of names ready, make sure that's also the case that you want. So if you did want everything to be all caps, make sure it's applied here. So after you have the names how you like, we'll go ahead and save the file. Go to save as. I'm going to save this one on our desktop as well. The important part on here is the type of file you save it as. It needs to be a CSV file, comma delimited. So we'll go ahead and make sure it's that save as type, and we'll just name this name tag names. It'll say that some of the features might be lost. That's okay. Just go ahead and click yes when that does pop up. So after that, we're prepared to set up this job in VersaWorks. So inside VersaWorks, file, add job to queue, just like I'm doing with any other job. And I'll pull up that name tag file. Notice it, in the special items, it did recognize our cut line, and then something that kind of looks like an Excel spreadsheet, it's variable data. So it recognized that spot color as well. If I go into my job settings, You don't have to worry about copies like you would before. Make sure you grab get media with. 
but the first thing I want to do is come all the way down to the bottom of this variable data section and I want to enable it. After I enable it, I want to go to open and find that spreadsheet file and bring it in. Now notice it brought the names in. So I can select names and we can edit them here. Now the most important thing to do is we only have so much size here. So something I recommend to do is kind of take the longest name, which in this case was Kristen, and play with the font size from there. So we say 28 looks good. We can select all the names at once over here and change them all to 28. That way when we click on an individual one, they're all the same size. You're also able to pick any font that you have as a true type font loaded into your library. And you can apply them individually or to all of them if you like. After you have the text set up what you like, if you notice when you go back to the layout page, it already sets it up with those individual names, which is a really nice feature actually. After that, we can get our media width, make sure that you choose the proper media type, change our quality settings. And after that, we can go ahead and print it just like any other job. And after we sheet cut and weed the media, we have our finished product. And you can see we got the variable data there with all our different names that a customer is going to like. And it was less work for you as well.